our, our old friend, Professor L. Randall Ray, W-R-A-Y, Professor of Economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, Senior Scholar at the Levy Economics Institute and author of Modern Money Theory. He blogs over at neweconomicperspectives.org. Is, uh, and his uh, uh, Twitter is UM uh, Kansas City is on the line with us. Professor Ray, welcome back. Hi, Tom. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, could you, uh, first of all, you, you have a, uh, a mission-oriented finance for innovation conference coming up in the UK. You wanted to mention something about it. You want to give us the heads up on that? Well, sure. This is a project um, that I'm running with Mariana Mazzucato. And uh, what we're doing is integrating the work of uh, John Maynard Keynes, Joseph Schumpeter, and Hyman Minsky to try to figure out what we're going to do uh, to try to redirect finance away from financializing our whole economy and toward promoting capital development of the economy, public infrastructure investment, private investment, and also innovation. Wouldn't, would, wouldn't a lot of that be accomplished through changing the banking laws? Well, <clears throat> we definitely have to change the banking laws. Uh, we need to supervise what the banks are doing, and we might need the creation of new kinds of financial institutions, uh, say public development banks, for example, mm -hmm. in order to um, provide finance where we really need it. Very interesting. You also wrote a piece that uh, uh, Nouriel Roubini published over on Econo Monitor. It, it may have been in other places. That's where I read it. Yeah. Uh, it was titled, Join the Protest Against Home Theft. That's, that's uh, home theft. That's strong language. By whom? Uh, well, by, by bankers. <laughs> by bankers. There, there are a number of ways that they do it. Um, I think that... You know, it's not a stretch to say that a lot of foreclosures really are home theft. I mean, literally, in some cases, the banks are taking homes where people don't even owe any mortgage whatsoever. And what I've been focusing on over the last, I don't know, four years or so, is this industry creation called MERS, which is the Mortgage Electronic Registry System, which has screwed up property records so badly that even if banks wanted to be honest, uh, they don't know what they own. They don't know who owes who, and neither do we. They, it, what happened to the paper trail? Well, in most cases, they destroyed the documents, apparently, which is why we had that wave of uh, Burger King robo-signers a couple years ago. Because uh, I mean, they were trying to reinvent the documents? They, they had uh, online advertisements saying, hey, do you need us to... You create the documents that you've lost. Yeah, uh, wow. they were forging documents. Absolutely. Wow. wow. Because they don't exist. And so, you, what can what can the average person do about this? This you say this is all illegal. It, you know, it's very very tough. Some homeowners uh, have gone to court, and some of them have won, and some of them have lost. Um, there are also. Um, uh, institutional investors who are getting in, involved here. Um, we we just had a report of a seven billion dollar uh, settlement that made a lot of news. Eric Holder um, got that, but the institutional investors, people like uh, Pimco and BlackRock, are also suing the the banks over issues related to the securitizations. And their lawsuit right now is actually $250 billion. Whoa. So it's not just individual homeowners. We've also got institutional investors who, knew, who know that they were screwed by the banks in the securitization process. Well, that's a lot bigger than the, what was it, $7 billion that, uh, that the federal government just took out of the height of Citicorp. That's right. Um, you, you wrote a piece called Egregious Fraudster Introducing Bob Rubin's Citicorp. Tell me about that. Well, this was a case where um, there was a, a whistleblower at City who even wrote to Bob Rubin saying that, look, at the, the mortgages that we're packaging together into securities and selling to Fannie and Freddie, which, of course, are government-sponsored enterprises, so essentially here they're screwing the government, um, these don't meet what are called reps and warranties, which is uh, the bank that is originating the mortgages and then selling them to be securitized are claiming that, hey, these are good mortgages, when in reality they weren't. 
this whistleblower documented that 60% of the mortgages did not meet the reps and warranties. So they were screwing the investors in those securities. Now, there's all, all sorts of other kinds of fraud going on, but this is the big one that uh, PIMCO is going after. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, again, what can the average person do about this? <laughs> well, one thing uh, that I wrote about on my blog was an attempt, a, a protest, to try to stop this steamrolling process that has been undertaken um, to legalize an electronic registry system. So MERS was created by the banks themselves. So it's an industry monster created to speed up the, uh, the securitization and foreclosure process. And now what we have is that the banks have gotten together with the Fed and um, with others to legalize this and create a a national electronic registry system. Now, it's not necessarily a terrible idea to do this, but to have the bankers in charge of putting the thing together is really scary. It's going to reproduce what MERS has been doing. In the old days, we had written documents, and if you uh, had a mortgage and bought a house, this was recorded with your um, local recorder. And so everything was above board. It was completely transparent. You could find out who owned your mortgage, who you were supposed to make payments to, who owned the property. You can't find that out anymore because it's all in this MERS electronic uh, registry that only the banks have access to. Wow. Wow. Um, Should people then, if if somebody's going to buy a house, for example, should they be trying to avoid dealing with the big banks and instead go to a local uh, community bank or something like that? I mean, what, a, what, are, what are some of the ways that average Americans can protect themselves from the fraudsters and the banksters? Well, you should be very wary of buying a foreclosed house because it's very likely that the um, banks have destroyed the property records, and this could come back to haunt you in the future if the person who lost their home can show that it was, you know, stolen uh, right. They can get their property back. Does title insurance help you in cases like that? The the title insurers started to get scared, too. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, some of them were refusing to write title insurance on at least some of the foreclosed homes. Um, but, you know, title insurance is only as good as the insurer, and we found out uh, in the collapse of the subprime mortgages, a lot of that stuff was insured, too, and the insurers went under. Whoa. Well, so in the minute we have left, we're talking with uh, L. Randall Ray, professor of economics at the University of Missouri, uh, neweconomicperspectives.org. In the minute we have left, what, what do you see in the near and long-term future for the economy of the United States? Uh, well, housing uh, is not recovering. Uh, there, a few months ago, people thought that uh, we saw a recovery underway. It looks like that has petered out. Um, I know that the jobs data came in a little bit better than what we expected, but most other data on the economy does not look too good. Um, I think that we're probably slowing down rather than speeding up. So we're sliding into another uh, recession? Um, I think so. I I think it's going to be very hard for us to recover when we still have so many homeowners underwater and losing their homes, which depresses the whole neighborhood. Right, and it also depresses demand in the general economy because those people are paying their mortgages instead of buying things. That's right. Professor Ray, thank. it's always great talking with you. Thank you for dropping by today. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, check out his blog or where he blogs over at neweconomicperspectives.org. We'll be right back.